Well, hello, my friends. I'm back with a little sketchy video for you. I mean, it's not it's not sketchy as in weird. It's just a sketchbook video. I wanted to paint with some watercolors and do some portraits because that hand challenge was not watercolors and it was not portraits. So that is why I decided to do this. I also only have three more pages left in this sketchbook, so I wanted to just whip them out, get one of them done. Uh, yeah, so that's what you're seeing now. Hopefully, you should have a sketchbook tour coming either next week or the week after that. For some reason, with sketchbooks, I often slow down a lot near the end. Um, I don't know why that is. I just kind of get scared of finishing it. Uh, but I promise I'm going to finish this one and... I hope you are looking forward to that sketchbook tour. I am. I've been working on it for about a year now. So anyway, I need to not do a voiceover for a sketchbook tour. I need to do a voiceover for this. So I wanted to experiment with doing lighter layers with watercolor. Sometimes I tend to go pretty heavy and pigmented and then things get really dark and... I don't always feel like I have much control. So I started um, with some pretty light, thin layers for uh, this, these couple of paintings, which, you know, is fine. I feel like it was nice to build up different um, subtle color shifts, especially in the faces, but I could have gone a little bit darker sooner. I'm using Daniel Smith paints for this which I have in a little palette that you saw at the beginning, and they're dried. And the color payoff is not that great. One thing I've noticed is that in a lot of brands, the like warm red color is super, super pigmented, and the others are not quite as pigmented. So I was struggling with that a bit to even get um, ultra-pigmented layers, but... Overall, I think it was fine, and I, I like these paints, so there's that. I haven't painted realistic skin tones in a while, and I'm not really sure why I painted these with realistic skin tones. I think I just started doing it on one of them, and then I felt like it would be weird to put crazy colors on a different one. I did like the turquoise shadows, though, that I was doing on two of the faces. I think I definitely want to play around a little bit more with that effect. I think it looks really cool. You'll notice that these get a little bit muddy near the end, which I honestly kind of like. I don't like when watercolors are super crisp and distinct as much, and I think the more earthy, dusty tones uh, fit skin tones better. I go in with colored pencils in a bit because I was feeling like these portraits were lacking uh, some depth and because I'm painting on a mixed media paper, it's hard to really get very dark with your layers. You can't really work wet on wet because the layers dry so fast and you can't get super deep shadows. Also, for some reason, I felt like only using one brush for these paintings. I don't really know why. I just did. So, <laughs> I didn't get any of the nice details that I wanted. So, I decided to go in with some colored pencil, um, put some more wacky colors on. Uh, I'll talk about that more when I actually get to that. I jumped around quite a bit on, these, on this page. Uh, I'm not really sure why I didn't edit it so that they looked like they were all, uh, you know, like I was painting one face at a time, but I, I didn't, so sorry. <laughs> Maybe it makes it more interesting to uh, jump around between the different pieces. And I mean, that's how I painted it, so it's realistic. I was getting a little bored um, with waiting for paint to dry, so I just jumped around. And it is helpful to do that so that you can come back to the piece and look at it with slightly fresher eyes 
to see what needs more contrast, what needs to be improved, instead of just staring at the same piece for a long time. I think my favorite piece is the one on the top of the girl with the, you know, kind of purpley brownish hair. Uh, there's there's the one with purple hair, and then there's the one above that. That that's my favorite. I really like how the the turquoise incorporated into that, and how it all feels pretty cohesive. The one with purple hair I like as well. I really like the red and purple around the nose. So I think that's something I want to incorporate more. And I'm not really sure what I was doing with the third one, which I probably haven't gotten to yet. But it just... I don't know, I just couldn't make it right. And when I was sketching it, I was like, ugh, I don't like how this sketch is working out. And I was like, well, maybe when I paint it, it'll be better. But no, I, I know that painting when I not happy with the sketch means I'm going to end up with a painting that I don't like. And yet I pushed through. Um, this one really took the most work out of all of them with the colored pencil because I just kind of was tired of using the watercolor and kind of gave up and moved on to the pencil. I wasn't originally intending to use pencil in this page, but uh, like I said before, I only wanted to use one brush, the mixed media paper, and also, I don't know, I just haven't been feeling super comfortable with watercolor lately. I've been doing more colored pencil stuff, and also I was painting with gouache a lot, and I'm working on a piece at school right now that's in acrylics, so watercolor's been something that I'm only really doing on my own time, and I haven't been doing that much art lately anyways. I feel like when I do a challenge, uh, like I did in February, I feel kind of burned out afterwards. And then I feel like I can't make art every day. So yeah, watercolor hasn't really been vibing with me lately. I don't know what it is. I think there's just something about having thick paint on your brush that's really nice with uh, gouache and acrylic. And you don't get that with watercolor, and it's has its own um, strengths and fun things, but this page was a struggle, so yeah, not really sure what else to say with that. <laughs> uh, I just kind of pushed through, tried to keep it semi-loose, just embrace the muddiness, and yeah, just kind of power through. All right, I'm gonna leave you with some music until I get to the colored pencils. Melody, I just need to find my way. So when I fall behind, just give me one more day to regret the word I could never say. I'm traveling with the past.
right, now we're to the colored pencils. I've been really inspired by Chris Hong lately. She's an artist um, on YouTube and Instagram, and she does a lot of watercolor and colored pencil whimsical portrait stuff. Recently, she's been painting with watercolor and then just kind of throwing colored pencil all over the top of it. And I really like the textures that she's able to achieve with that and the different colors that she layers on top of each other that you can't quite do with watercolor without things getting really muddy. So I wanted to try that, which is why you'll see me using the turquoise pencil quite a bit. I like adding those little pops of kind of unconventional color to a portrait because skin, I mean, I'm sure a lot of you have heard this, but skin is not just, you know, one color. Even if you're looking at the same value range, the forehead is going to be a little bit more yellow, the cheeks are going to be a little bit more red, and then the chin will be a little bit bluer. That's just like a general rule of thumb. So adding the colored pencil allows me to have really just tiny, tiny color pops in the piece, but they don't stand out as, oh, there's a turquoise section. The colored pencils also allow me to build up the saturation and value when the colors might have gotten a little muddy with the watercolor. Especially on this um, purple person, the reference picture had a lot of red around the nose, so I tried to... Oh, excuse me, my voice is getting all cracky. Um, <laughs> I tried to get a lot of that uh, captured with the watercolor, and then I added colored pencil on top of it to make that pop even more. And with the girl in the top, I added some turquoise into her hair to balance out with the turquoise shadow and eyes. And I really like how that turned out. So I think with colored pencil, it's just like a balancing act of how much you're concentrating the color in one area. I'm not very good at using colored pencils just on their own. I feel like they always get very grainy or when I layer them, they get kind of streaky and muddy and I don't know, I just can't make them work for me. I'm in awe of people that can do like colored pencil realism. I do like layering them over watercolor and adding little pops of color here and there. A lot of the artists that I follow, I notice do this. So that's something I want to emulate. I've been working a lot on noticing what I like specifically about other people's pieces. I think I talked about this a bit in my art style video. And I just sort of notice patterns in the pieces that I've really been loving and I try to add them to my own stuff. I don't I don't copy. I just try to have it in my mind and think about it consciously while I'm drawing and then hopefully it shows up somehow. So I hope you enjoyed these. Yeah, let me know which one was your favorite. Yeah, so thank you for watching. I uh, hope you are having a wonderful day, or if not, that this made it a little tiny bit better. And I'll see you next week. Alright, bye. So when I'm